when I was finishing up the manuscript of or the first the first manuscript draft of Harbors of the of the Harbors of the Sun, I got I was like working so hard on it, it was getting all these ideas for other things. It was this really like creative surge. And I got a bunch of different ideas. And one of the ideas was for a short story, a uh, science fiction idea about a um like a person who was maybe part cyborg or something who was an enslaved security person, but who had freed themselves and then had to reveal that to save the people that they were, they were taking care of that they actually had started to like. And it was going to be a sad short story. And then as I started, you know, I finished, I was really excited about it. I was just going to jot down some notes so I wouldn't forget it and ended up writing, I think maybe five pages and that was the first scene with Mensa, Dr. Mensa knocking on the cubicle wall and having the conversation with Murderbot. And so I made myself set it aside and I finished the Harbors of the Sun. And then immediately, um, like the next day, I started working on, um, at the time I was calling it the Murderbot Diaries. That was one of the ones where the title just came right away. <laughs> so, um, um, and yes, and the Princess Diaries was definitely an inspiration. So, um started working on it and, um, and just wrote every day for a month. Um, except for in the middle, I had to go to comic Palooza in Houston and I also had a back injury that really kind of slowed me down. Um, and then finished it. And, um, I, I, I decided like just not very far into it when I was developing the idea of sec units and, and how that was going to work and, and realized this was, could not be a short story. And I didn't want it to have a sad ending um, that it was probably going to be more novella links. I was still thinking in a short format. And um, so I talked to my agent, you know, cause tour.com had just the past year had started their novella line with uh, the sorcerer of the wild deeps by Kaya Shanti Wilson, which was a brilliant book. And so, and they also did these beautiful, you know, covers and everything. And I was like, well, can we try to, you know, do you think tour.com would be interested in a novella like this? And she said, sure, let's finish, you know, finish it and we'll try to, uh, try to sell it to them. And I finished it and we did, uh, sold it to Lee Harris at tour.com. And he asked for a second novella. And at that point, I think it could have been any other story. Cause they were generally, when they were buying them, they were asking for a second one for, sometimes. And, um, and I was like, well, I really like this character. I'd always, I'd kind of envisioned it as a single story, but I really like this character. I'm going to write a second novella. And I had the idea then for the story that was going to be, um, exit strategy, but I realized pretty quickly in writing and rewriting that I wasn't going to be able to get there. So I was just concentrating on this second story that was going to become artificial condition and art wasn't even actually in it. At that point, <laughs> I wrote the first 10, 15,000 words and it was not working. And I had a throwaway sentence in there about Murderbot having to alter its physical configuration to, to not be caught as a, as a sec unit. And there was a throwaway line about a transport helping it. And I thought, well, I really need to show that. I really want to get, you know, that's an important part of the story and I kind of need to show that. And so I went back and started again and then art showed up as a character. And after that, you know, <laughs> it just took off. A sec unit is, it's like a combination of a machine intelligence with human neural tissue and, um, it's cloned kind of cloned human body parts. So it's basically um, um, used as a security unit. Murderbot is a sec unit. They also have, and they're called constructs. And construct is the, the base unit. That's basically a machine intelligence made to look like a person with um, a combination of um, with some human cloned human neural tissue, and then they can become either sec units, which are your security units, or uh, comfort units, which are basically um, for used for sex and uh, and that kind of thing. So Murderbot is a sec unit, and they have a governor module that controls all their actions. And if they don't follow orders to the letter, if they get some of them uh, have restrictions, like they can't go more than a hundred meters from their client. They'll be killed or punished with horrible um, uh, 
basically like being electrically shocked. So they're, they're, they're sentient, they're, they're people, but they're trapped like this. They're designed to be, to be enslaved like this. And uh, Murderbot managed to hack its governor module and free itself, but it had lived like this all its life. It didn't have, you know, a lot of options. And when this happens to um, uh, sec units in particular, it's kind of assumed by all the humans that if a, a sec unit frees itself, it's going to go rogue and start killing everybody. And Murderbot just basically didn't know what to do. And it was able to download or it was once it freed it, it freed itself by hacking its governor module, it was able to access basically their version of the internet, all these, the feed, all these downloads and everything they're out there. And it started watching human media, uh, TV shows, movies, all this books, all this kind of stuff. And it was a lot more interested in doing that than in killing people. And that's how its personality really developed. Art was just came out of nowhere. Suddenly when I, when um, they murder bot, sneaks aboard the tran its transport and then sits down and they start having that conversation. That's where art came from. And I had no idea the character was going to develop that way. And it was so fun. It's always really fun when you have the kind of what you think is going to be a minor character that, that as soon as you start working on them, they just become their own thing and kind of take over the story a little bit. It was fun because it's not, um, it's a friendship. Um, it's, it's, um, but it's a really close friendship and, um, she's the first human it's ever, it ever considered trusting. And so the relationship is always going to be really close and a little intense. And then it, it was kind of a revelation for her because she was in a position where she, she knew how these beings were constructed. So intellectually she knew they were people, but she didn't really, uh, it, but it's kind of like there's knowing that. And then there's knowing it when you talk to someone like this and you really realize how horrible the situation is. And so she had a whole learning curve of wanting to help murder bot, but also having, you know, needing to learn to understand, uh, excuse me, how to help it. And that, it's a person with its own agenda and own um, um, feelings and is really intelligent and um, um, wants to go its own way. So they have a learning curve there. And so their, um, their relationship is really cool to write. And it's, um, you know, it takes a lot of thought and everything, but uh, it's a lot of fun. You don't really see much of the company in All Systems Red, and you don't see very much of Grey Chris except for those few operatives they encounter. So in Exit Strategy is the first time you really see them both, and that they're both kind of terrifying. And um, so you have two terrifying entities that are basically fighting each other, and uh, the, the, the protagonists have to get out from underneath that. Um, and yeah, part of the effort in exit strategy is and the, is getting the company to actually focus on Gray Chris as their enemy instead of anything else, um, because it's it's um, it's incredible. It's a corporation. It's incredibly greedy and self absorbed. So it's not going to do anything unless it thinks there's a profit, and so or it thinks there's a benefit. And watching that those those two clash, that's a lot of fun. I like to do terrible things to Grey Chris and the company. <laughs>